Hello, this is the tutorial on the uh, design uh, editors for Squarespace. So when you log into your site, you'll usually see the dashboard and whatnot. Um, instead of pages, we're going to go to design. Um, there's quite a few different things that you can mess with on this one. Logo and title uh, controls this area up here, your site title. You can edit. You're definitely going to want one of these even if you have a logo because this is going to show up on Google. Uh, tagline if you want. Will show up sometimes up here, sometimes out in this area. Just kind of depends. Um, sometimes only in Google. Depends upon basically how you, what template you have and how it's set up. Uh, logo image, you can add a logo if you want, and you can add this through either, uh, uh, sorry, through a JPEG or a PNG. Uh, doesn't support EPS or anything like that. Um, so you can kind of add whatever you want. It is going to shrink it down um, and process it. You can adjust the size of it somewhat too. Normally I wouldn't use a huge JPEG, but I don't have a, a logo just straight out of hand. Um, your browser icon favicon is this little thing up next to your site title. Uh, notice that your site title is here next to your page. So if I update this and toss in a favicon, this is what you're going to want to be in PNG or ICO format. Um, and there are online favicon generators uh, that will help you with this. Just Google favicon generator and pick the first one that comes up. They're all pretty much the same. Um, that will help you make this. Otherwise, you can just format basically a, a square PNG because you're going to want the uh, transparent background on it. And you can save those. And then notice it shrunk down to make a logo. Uh, and then my favicon sometimes takes a little time to change. So don't be nervous if this doesn't immediately change right away, especially if you're rocking the trial template like I'm doing here. Uh, it might not change until you switch it to a regular account. Um, otherwise, it might just take an hour, a couple days. It's, it's kind of variable. But if you have that in there, it will eventually change. So template allows you to switch your template. Um, you, your content will transfer over for the most part. Some of it might not be visible. Like if you click a template that doesn't have visible page titles or descriptions, that content will be gone. It'll kind of drop the content where it thinks best in your new template. Usually works pretty good, but if you're going to switch templates, I recommend doing it at the start just in case. Uh, we're going to skip style editor now for now. Checkout page style is going to allow you to do some basic stuff on your checkout page. Um, although you can't really do a whole lot on here. You can change background color. You can show the logo instead of the site title. Um, you can change that site title color and you can change your button color. That's pretty much about it. Announcement bar, this might be handy, especially for a blog or a restaurant or something that has announcements coming up quite often. You can type your announcement in here. You can't really style it without doing custom styles. Um, but yeah, any sort of announcements you want, it's just going to toss a bar at the top of your page and shift everything down if you enable it. It's handy for quick change things. Mobile information bar. Um, I usually keep this disabled. You can enable it light or dark depending upon what you want. It's basically just going to show your email address, hours, um, directions to your business, phone numbers, contact information, things like that. If you've filled that information out in your settings, basic information. Uh, Squarespace badge, disable, enable, uh, it basically puts a little fixed badge here that shows that it's powered by Squarespace. Notice this thing down here is um, 
always going to be there unless you physically get rid of it. And you can show it so it's fixed, so it's always, so it's scrolled to the bottom, displayed on what, where it's at, kind of what it looks like. Um, if you want it on there, I think you get brownie points from Squarespace, uh, but that's about it. Custom CSS is something that I will show you in another tutorial. You can customize all of the CSS on Squarespace if you can find their uh, code information or if you create your own custom code. And then your advanced, uh, you can add Typekit if you want your own fonts off Typekit. Uh, Squarespace does have a pretty wide selection, but you can add your own. You can disable the mobile where it's going to not be responsive. Um, enable device view basically means when I shrink this down and it brings me down to the phone view or the iPad view, which you'll notice because I'm in iPad view right now because it shrank me down right there. You can take that off where it's just going to shrink down to whatever your thing, but it'll always be desktop view. I find it's kind of handy to leave that on just so that you know if you're doing custom stuff when you're getting into areas where you're going to need to uh, use a media query to style something responsively for the phone and uh, the iPad. Squarespace will fully make their stuff fully responsive, so all of your non-custom stuff, they will automatically responsibly style for you, but the rest of it you're going to have to do on your own. And then the style editor is kind of where you really get into the meat of the site itself. So you can adjust styles for the header, um, changing your backgrounds, making it transparent. Um, notice you can change your transparency here using RGBA colors, which is basically RGB colors. So I usually find those um, through online video converters or online color converters, or just going into Photoshop and picking a color I want and then finding the RGBA colors or the RGB colors. The A is your transparency level. So this is 0 0.05, that means that this is white, since it's 255, 255, 255. Transparency of 0 0.5 um, or 0 0.4. So that's going to be the transparency percent of the white that I set up there. Notice you can also do red and then shift your transparency bar right there too as well. But for now, and you can also type in hex colors. So it's pretty variable, but the only thing it doesn't take is CMYK. But we're gonna keep ours white for now. You can fix position, which means that's gonna scroll with you or not. Um, you can make it transparent just on banner images. So if this was a different color, but we wanted it transparent on the banner, um, we wanna fix it. It'll show that color when it's not on the banner. Uh, you can change your title font if you don't have a logo. Um, Squarespace does have a wide number of fonts to go through that they have set up, and then they also allow um, some Google fonts and things like that. You can link your type kit in there, but they've got quite a few. Notice that you can have more. They've picked out some from each area, um, but yeah, otherwise you can add more. You can adjust the font style, which is the weight, font size, whether or not it's always gonna be capitalized, uppercase, lowercase, or a mix of both. Text decoration is your underline, overline, line through. Letter spacing is the spacing between the letters. Since I have a logo up there, I'm not going to do that at all. I don't think you have that. Uh, site navigation is going to be your nav styles. I'm gonna save this and get that white back so we can see what we're doing. There we go. 
So navigation, you can change basically all of the same stuff that you could for your site title font. You can change the color of the nav. And then the active color is the page that you're on. Um, I'm going to add another page in here so we can see the difference between those. So since it's our story and it just scrolls down, you're actually not seeing nav for these. So we'll add in another regular page. And let's drag it down to there. Oh, no, that's secondary now. We don't want it there. Kind of have to be a little careful on where you drag stuff and just kind of wait for it to catch up. Again, some days, sometimes score space is kind of slow. So notice that nav test is in red because that's the page that I'm currently viewing. Um, anybody who is viewing your site would be Say the same thing. So they're viewing our story, now you're viewing nav test. Uh, the hover state overlay is something that you have to change through custom CSS if you want that. And I'll teach you how to do that in the custom CSS um, styles, but you can change the opacity on hover nav. For some reason, they don't let you do that um, in at least in the Alex template, I have seen it as an option in some templates. Parallax images, it's not going to let you view that unless you're on the index page. That's one very important thing to note about the Squarespace style editor is it is, it rearranges itself based on what page you're currently viewing. So I always do it from the index page because that gives you the most amount of options. I don't know why they do it like that, but they do. So notice before we couldn't see parallax, but now we can. We have to refresh this to actually see our parallax image. So we can do it with where it parallax scrolls or not. This would be not, which means that that background image is scrolling the same speed as this. Otherwise, it's going to scroll at different speeds. So you notice that, that moves slower than the other one to give you that depth effect. So that's what parallax means. It means that there's different layers set up um, and they scroll at different depths stacked right on top of each other. You can hide your parallax nav over here if you don't want that. You can adjust how big this parallax image is. Um, so it can be full screen when you first get onto the page until you scroll down. It can be half screen. It can be two thirds. That's going to adjust the crop height. Um, image overlay is something that you might want to do. Notice it's kind of tough to see my description and whatnot right there unless I toss an image overlay on it. And then this is just like doing the colors before. So right now I have 000, which means black at 4%. Instantly makes it easier to read that. If I didn't want it quite as black, I can adjust the slider up here or the numbers down here. Um, just helps make it readable if you have a description up there. Your page title um, and description stuff is this right here. So your description font, you can hide your page title, which is right there. Notice that everything you do on here is going to do it on every single page. Uh, so if you only want the page title hidden on one page, you have to do that through custom CSS. Another thing I'll show you on the custom CSS tutorial. Uh, you can adjust the alignment of them, whether they're going to be left or center. And you can say whether they're going to be under the parallax image, which you then have to make that parallax image transparent, or whether they're going to be over. Um, under, is, oh, sorry, under means they're going to be kicked down here, and this is just going to be a blank image, which is kind of weird. Uh, over image, kick them back up there. Site title background, you can have a background, and again, you can mess with the colors um, kind of however you want on that.
or you can do extra description formatting so I can format if I want more description and whatnot in there. Uh, main content, you, this is the background color for most of your site. Your headings, so we've got different heading elements um, and that's set up Oops, actually cancel. Yeah, I'm gonna discard all these. Sorry, I thought I was on, I got kind of stuck there for a second. If we wanna go into our story, I'll show you just quick what the, the headers are. So H1 means heading one, that's normal text. You can adjust this to whatever you want um, and it adjusts the whole paragraph so if you did this paragraph, unless you have a return in here, it's going to do the whole paragraph. Go back to design. Style editor. There we go. Um, so you can adjust the fonts for all three heading levels. You can adjust heading colors in general, your, your body text font, body text color, in-text link, so anything that links to somewhere else. You can also underline those body links or not. And then if you have a quote block, you can adjust the font for that too. Um, you can also adjust the footer background color. Um, you can adjust the... Secondary navigation, which on this template shows up here, you can adjust that font, um, nav color and nav active color, or you can kick everything back to the default uh, if you want. And that's pretty much the style editor. Uh, once I show you the code blocks in a different tutorial, I'll also show you custom CSS, but that is how you basically adjust the overall styles for your site.